2001, one of my best friends committed suicide. He worked for me. Terry, great guy, grew up together. Um, he committed suicide. And uh, at the time, his mother had just passed away. He wasn't married. Um, and we were going through a, getting a banking license in uh, Switzerland. He was under a lot of pressure. And he did what he did. And uh, in 2003, that was when Joey Farrell, two years after Terry was dead, by the way, that was when Joey Farrell went to the FDI, FBI and, or the FBI, the government, and said, look, you know, I got to fill out this form because you're messing with my client. Well, when they do that, the FBI has 10 years to come back and let you know what happened in the investigation. So I was in, uh, on vacation in Florida, 2013. My brother Georgie just passed away. I was a little bit down. And I got a call from a friend of mine. He goes, you know, I got a book at, at my house that came in, in your name. And I said, oh, yeah, ship it to me. I'm in Miami. I get it. I open it up. It's not a book. It's a pamphlet. It's an FBI fa pamphlet. So it was 2013. They had to, by law, 10 years later, let, them, let me know that I was the subject of an investigation. When my close friend, Terry, committed suicide, I was in Italy. The FBI <clears throat> investigated me for murder. They followed me around 2002 and 2001 and 2003. They had almost every single thing was blacked out. But you could get little glimpses of here and there, and they had to send it to me. Who knows how much money they spent on doing something so stupid. What did you have to do to get this? What was it, like an FBI report or something? Right. So when Joe filed and said, I think that my mm. client's uh, rights are being infringed upon, right, of being abused, right. he filled out the paperwork Got before it. he started dancing with them. And so they have 10 years, and they must let you know the results within 10 years. And so they send it on the 10th year all the time. Right. And so I got it in 2013. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, brought tears to me. I mean, and I they redacted it. parts. Oh, of the, the whole thing is redacted. I mean, I never even read the whole thing. I got it sitting in my home in Italy. Actually. I mm. never sat down and said, I'm going to concentrate on this. It was just so absurd. I mean, yeah. forget about the waste of taxpayers money. Oh my God. But you know, this is coming because in 89, maybe they wanted me and I went to Italy. And they called me, and I said, I'll be there next week. I'll be there next week. I'll be there next week. And maybe they thought I was, you know, pulling their leg. Then in 97, 98, whenever it was, they wanted me again. And I said, oh, I'll be there next week. I'll be there next month. I'll be whatever. Yeah. So then, okay, this happens. Well, oh, yeah, but didn't that guy work for Gerondi? Well, okay, you know, you know who Gerondi is. One thing leads to another. And the morons are investigating for her and like one of my best friends. I they mean, were, it's they just, were trying to pin it on you. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's just absurd. Um, and don't get me wrong. I know a couple FBI agents that are great guys, by the way. Phil is, is a close friend of mine. I love him, you know, and he's a retired FBI guy. And there's a, a lot of great guys. And there's a lot of great congressmen and a lot of great congresswomen and a lot of great politicians, et cetera. It's just unfortunate that greed ends up being one of the strongest characteristics in humans. Mm. And so what happens? Who goes to the top? The greediest politicians. Yeah. Who goes to the top? The greediest FBI guys. Yeah. Who goes to the top? The greediest executives. And the result is, you know, I always say that the, the modern father of the United States of America is Benito Mussolini. Why? Well, because he invented fascism. Because Benito thought he was a country guy he wasn't you know a greedy guy but he thought if i get industry together with the politicians it'll be the best country in the world we'll be efficient and we'll protect the ind we'll protect the workers right from industry with politicians so the politicians will make sure that industry won't take over and abuse the workers, mm -hmm. and that's fascism. And in the United States, that's what we have. 
The industry owns the politicians today, but the politicians don't protect the people because right. they sell them out to the industry. So in the end, Benito Mussolini is, uh, you know, the father of modern day America. That kind of permeates through every big industry. They just are constantly trying to create products to make more money. And it kind of is the same thing with big pharma where they're not necessarily trying to innovate or make things better for people or better humanity. They're just trying to make more money and make more profit. One time it was hilarious. Um, Joe Farrell, my attorney, I was, every time I would come back after I bailed uh, Greg out, uh, the judge eventually, by the way, said that the FBI, okay, you know, I have to listen to the FBI. So Mr. Geronda, you have to get to me you know, five letters of recommendation and your last three years of your tax returns, I need to know where that money is coming from that you're going to bail Mr. Swan out with. And um, I eventually wrote a letter to the judge myself, and I said, Dear Your Honor, you know, I'm an American citizen, proud to be an American citizen. I served in the military. And when I was growing up, we were taught that you don't, don't turn your back on your friends. And Mr. Swan needs to put... Sorry, I said his name. Uh, Greg needs to put his house in order. And uh, I was told that if I put the money up, I would have trouble with the IRS and possibly the FBI. But I'm a true American, and I'm not turning my back on my friend. And I kind of think that that was the letter you that sold the it? judge said, yeah, that <laughs> sold it and got it home. And in fact, I was audited seven out of the nine in the next years. Every time I came to the United wow, States, really? they stopped me at the border and they made me miss my flights. And it was one of the times I was in one of these little glass rooms and on the thing it says, if you feel that your rights are being abused, call 1-800-whatever. And I copied the number down. I called one of my attorneys, Joey Farrell. He said, Joe, do me a favor. Call these morons. I mean, what are they doing? I, I was on my way to Miami. They made me miss my flight again. You know, every time they're, they're, they're messing with me, you know. So about a week later, Joe calls me. He says, uh, Pat, I, uh, I talked to the FBI. I said, okay. Are you going to stop messing with me? He said, well, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Well, what do they say? Well, they said that they know what they're doing and that if I'm representing a piece of shit like you, that I must be a piece of shit as well. And that I have two kids and a law practice. And basically told me that if I didn't stop representing you, that I would also have trouble. And I said, Joey, I love you. You're a great guy. Forget about it. And that's it. I forgot about it. Didn't call him anymore. Um, but that's exactly what happened. 